Today we're going to be talking about uh, how you can improve your Argo CD experience uh, with UI extensions. Uh, but before I get to that, I'd like to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Remington Breeze. I'm a software engineer at Acuity, uh, and I'm also an Argo CD uh, project maintainer. Leo, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Leonardo Luz Almeida. I usually go by Leo. I am a staff software developer at Intuit and I am one of the uh, maintainers uh, in the Argo CD and Argo Rollouts projects. Thanks, Leo. All right, um, so before we get started, I think uh, it's important to understand why we decided to make the Argo CD user interface uh, more extensible in the first place. Um, so one of the core tenets of our development philosophy uh, for the Argo CD product um, has always been focus. Um, so we want to prioritize core functionality um, without adding a lot of unnecessary cruft and bloat. Um, but over time, we kind of noticed that more and more people adopted Argo CD, and some more unique use cases arose that needed uh, unique solutions that we couldn't just put into the main project. Um, so one of these use cases that we found ourselves in a pretty unique situation to solve was a lot of folks run Argo CD with Argo rollouts. Um, and they wanted more information about their Argo rollouts at a glance uh, in the user interface. Um, but we didn't want to tightly couple Argo CD with Argo rollouts. Uh, so to solve this, we built extensions uh, to try to keep delivering what we think is a world-class uh, developer experience to folks that just want to use Argo CD by itself, um, but also allowing users uh, with those more complex needs uh, an option to adapt the user interface to meet those needs. Um, so there are two sections of today's talk. Um, I'm going to be discussing the first, uh, that's, gonna, that's uh, standard UI extensions, and then Leo's going to go over the second part, which is proxy extensions, uh, a different type of extension. Uh, so first, I want to briefly go over uh, each type of extension so that you know what to look for when I give my demo. Uh, and then in that demo, uh, I'm going to first show you where each type of extension gets installed to. Uh, and how you can use them, and then I'll move to the main, uh, main subjects of my, my part of the presentation. So the first is rollouts extension uh, and the timeline extension. So I'm, I'm pretty excited to show you the uh, timeline extension today. Uh, it's in development and will be released soon, um, and it takes advantage of an improvement to the extension, extensions mechanism of the UI, uh, which I'll talk a little bit more about uh, later in the presentation. And then after you see these in action, uh, I'm going to pull back the curtain a little bit um, and show you exactly where these extensions were installed on my local machine. Uh, and then I'll talk about how you can install them in a production environment, because it is a little bit different. Uh, and after that, we'll, that concludes the demo, and we'll talk a little bit about uh, the anatomy of a UI extension um, and see what APIs Argo CD, Argo CD exposes uh, for you to inject your own extensions uh, and how it renders data and what data it receives from, from the UI. Uh, then for Leo's portion of the presentation, he's going to demonstrate another type of uh, extension, which I mentioned, called proxy extensions. Uh, the example of that here is the metrics extension. Um, and then after his demo, he's going to go into some detail about how these extensions work, both uh, with a basic example and then a more complex real-world example that um, is what they use it into it. Uh, and then finally, if uh, what we talked about today resonated with you, we're going to um, discuss some next steps and how you can get involved and maybe build your own extensions. All right. Um, so like I said, there are four types of extension. Um, the first is a resource tab extension. Uh, the second is a system level extension. The third is an application view extension. And the fourth is an, a fourth is an application tab extension. Uh, which is really just a special case of a resource tab extension. Uh, and with that, uh, I think it makes the most sense to show you guys the, where these extensions are in the user interface, so I'm going to give a quick demo. All right. So this is the Argo CD user interface, if you're unfamiliar with it. Um, what we're looking at here is uh, an overview of our application. This is all of the resource in it, resources in it. Um, and this is a rollouts application. Um, so the first place that extensions would get installed is the application tab extension. Uh, we don't have a good example of an application tab extension to show you today. Um, but if you were to install one, it would show up here in the application details panel. Uh, and up here at the top, you can see 
uh, there are multiple tabs, and it would essentially just be uh, a new tab. So like I said, it's a special case of a resource tab extension. Uh, I will be showing you that in a little bit, um, so it might make more sense. Uh, the second type of extension is a system level extension. Um, and that's going to show up over here on the left um, with these icons. And if you're familiar with the Argo CD interface, uh, you'll know that this cat icon is not usually there. Uh, and that's because I installed a system level extension. Um, so let's take a look at it. So system level extensions take up your whole screen. Um, and this extension is really simple. Uh, it uses a public facing uh, API, external API, uh, to get pictures of cats. So if I refresh the page, there will be a new picture. Um, so this is really useful for things like maybe adding documentation or configuration um, that you want at a global level and not at an application level. Uh, and the reason that I use this API is to demonstrate that you don't actually just have to rely on uh, data from the Argo CD use, uh, interface or API server. Uh, you can query external APIs, and that's really good for things like, say you have a, an internal VPN or a corporate VPN, and you have some publicly exposed uh, endpoints that are accessible only on the VPN. You don't need to authenticate. Um, you could absolutely create an extension that, that leverages that data. So uh, moving back to our application, um, I'll demonstrate the rollouts extension. So like I said, this is a rollouts application. Um, and when I started the demo, you might have noticed uh, I had the rollouts dashboard open. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with this, this is a user interface that gets shipped with Argo rollouts by default. Um, it's really easy to spin up. Um, but sometimes you don't want to spin it up locally and you don't want to host it yourself. Um, so it would be really useful to have some of this information uh, in the Argo CD interface itself. So that's what we did with the rollouts extension. So if I go back here to the user interface and click on this rollouts resource, uh, you'll notice that there is an additional tab called more. Um, and this is the resource tab extension type that I was discussing earlier. So here we have a simplified version of that rollouts dashboard that we saw before. Um, and this is read only, uh, or this specific extension is read only. Uh, but if I go back here to the dashboard, I can uh, edit the image and I'll show you what happens when we make a change. So I update the image here. And now if we go back here, you see that the, the two interfaces match and we're on a pause step. Um, but Argo CD is not read only. So what we can do is promote this rollout from the resource tree. So I'll come back here and click promote full. And once I do that, if I click here again, we can see that the rollout has been promoted and it's gone through each and every one of the steps. Um, so that's the rollout extension. And like I said, that's an example of a resource tab extension. Uh, so the final type of extension that I'll demonstrate for you today is called an application view extension. Um, and where those show up is up here in the right. So um, again, if you're familiar with the UI, you know that there are typically four different types of view. So there's the resource tree view, which is what we've been looking at. Uh, there's the pod view, which is really useful for seeing pods and, and who owns them. Then there's the network view, which is really useful for visualizing network traffic in your application. And then there's the list view, which is just a, a simple list. Um, but you'll notice that there's a, a fifth icon that's not normally there, and that is for the timeline extension. Uh, so this is a brand new extension that I mentioned uh, that's still in development. Um, but what this is really good for is giving you uh, at a glance information, an overview of what's recently been going on in your application. So up at the top, we have some uh, just basic metrics, so total resources, total pods. Uh, there's one resource out of sync. Uh, we have the number of nodes. Uh, and then on the right, we have uh, memory pressure and CPU pressure. This is just an average across all nodes. If we had more than one, um, it would be a little bit more useful. Um, and actually, if I click this uh-oh button, which is simply for the demo, um, something's going to happen to our application, and I'll show you uh, what happens, what it looks like if uh, memory pressure and CPU pressure go up. Um, so it just changes color. Uh, and then down here we have the, uh, the meat of the timeline view, which is uh, the events timeline. So these are Kubernetes events that are being passed to the extension. Uh, and it all looks pretty good here. Uh, as most of you probably know, Kubernetes only stores about an hour of events by default. Uh, so we don't have a ton of them here, but um, they're enough to make it useful. Uh, and we can sort by new or sort by old. So the oldest one happened about an hour ago. Uh, we can also filter by warnings only. So if you want to just see the warnings that have happened, um, there aren't any right now. But um, if there were, they'd show up when you click that button. 
Uh, all right, so that concludes uh, the demo of all of the different types of extension, but I'd like to show you now how they were installed on my local machine. So if I go over to my terminal here, um, I have uh, the slash TMP slash extensions directory on my local machine up for you, and I'll go ahead and run tree to show you what's in it. Uh, so there are two directories, rollout and timeline, and that corresponds to the two extensions that you just saw. Um, and this is how extensions get hosted. So really, at the end of the day, the API server just needs to be able to access this slash TMP slash extensions directory. Um, and each extension must be in its own uh, uniquely named directory. And in that directory, we expect a JavaScript file with the prefix extension. Um, it can be called simply extension.js, but we've named them more appropriately here. Um, and that's how I'm running it locally. So the API server is running locally, and it's simply looking at this directory on my machine. But in the real world, you can't really do that. Um, your API server will be running uh, in a pod, so we need to do something a little bit more complex. So here I have uh, an example of an Argo CD server deployment. Uh, and Leo recently created a new image to make it super simple to install these extensions uh, in a production environment. Uh, so you'll notice that there's a new init container that's not typically on an Argo CD server deployment. Uh, and this init container is the extensions installer. Um, and all it needs to be able to install this extension is a URL to the bundle uh, that contains the JavaScript files. Um, you can additionally include a checksum if you'd like, but you don't have to. Uh, and then here's, uh, this is where it's really uh, getting mounted to. This is a volume mount. Uh, and as I said, it must uh, live in slash TMP slash extensions. Um, and this is a shared directory between the Argo CD server pod, uh, sorry, uh, Argo CD server container uh, and the init container that's essentially just downloading the, the tarball, untarring it, and moving it into the directory. Um, so it makes it really easy to get these installed. Uh, and that concludes my demo. So I'll move back to the presentation. Right. So I'd like to talk a little bit about the anatomy of a UI extension um, and how these actually get registered in the JavaScript. So Argo CD's uh, UI exposes uh, this function, register resource extension, um, and a number of others. Uh, there are appropriate functions for uh, system level extensions, for example, or application view extensions. Um, I've chosen this one as an example. Uh, but it attaches this, this function to the window variable, the global window variable. So when you build an extension, you'll just call window.registerResource extension uh, and pass it these uh, parameters. So the first is a React component. Um, it's pretty straightforward. I'll show you what properties this React component expects in a little bit. Uh, the second is group, and the third is kind. So for a resor resource tab extension, um, this is rendering for a specific type of Kubernetes resource, so you do need to specify the group kind. Uh, for a rollout, that's argoproj.io slash rollout. Um, and then finally, we have the tab title. Um, so this is going to be the name of the tab uh, in the Argo CD user interface. Uh, and for other types of extensions, there's simply a title. So for the, um, for the application view extension, for example, um, it'll change the browser tab title, among other things. Uh, so now looking a little bit closer at the actual React component. So this is a standard React component, and it accepts a few uh, different props. So the first is application, and this is the application uh, JSON data. The same data that's being used to render the rest of the user interface, it just gets passed to the extensions here. Same with resource. Um, for the other types of extension, you're not going to be using the resource. Uh, there won't be a resource, but for resource tab extension, there will, so this is where, for the rollout extension, um, the data gets passed there. And then there's the application tree. Uh, so again, this is the exact same JSON data that the Argo CD user interface is using to render that uh, resource tree view. Um, and finally, we have events. So this is the, uh, the data that's powering that timeline extension view that I showed you. And as I mentioned, it's coming soon. So it's, it's in development. Um, and this data will soon be passed to application view extensions. So with that, um, I'll pass it over to Leo. All right. Thanks, Remington. Um, all right. So my part of the presentation, I'm going to be talking about uh, proxy extensions. Um, 
which is not re something really independent from the UI extension that Remington just presented. It actually works in conjunction. So the first, uh, my, my demo is demonstrating uh, one extension that works with this uh, concept in mind, uh, which is the matrix extension, is, a, is an extension that we run at Intuit in all our, our clusters. So we have more than 300 clusters today running this extension. So let's jump in and uh, see how this looks like. So I recorded this requires uh, quite a bit of infrastructure. So I'm gonna run through the, through the, through the recording. So here I have uh, Argo City running and one application deployed called Metrics Demo. And on the right, you have the application itself uh, running. So the, the, the way the application works is pretty simplistic. It just sends uh, requests to itself and it has the ability to configure the, the, the percentage of 500 errors that will be returned, as well as the latency. So right now, as you can see, it is configured with 50% of 500 errors and latency of 10 seconds. Uh, and that's why you see the, the red octopuses uh, there in the UI. Okay, so here on the left, we have a standard AgroCity application. It has a rollout resource. Uh, there is uh, one, uh, one replica set deployed, and uh, what I'm going to be showing is a resource tab extension, which is a category of extension that Remington mentioned before. So if you click the rollout resource, you see this new uh, metrics tab, and uh, clicking the metrics tab, you'll be uh, displayed a collection of graphs that is pre-configured. So this is actually configured in the backend component of this extension, it, and it allows you to define any uh, metrics to be extracted from Prometheus. Uh, so yeah, you have the latency. So those are metrics that we use at Intuit, which are uh, the golden signal metrics. Uh, at the bottom, you see uh, pod metrics, so uh, CPU um, and memory. And um, here at the bottom, you see that there is a uh, checkbox uh, that shows thresholds. So, here, if you hover, you see the current uh, usage of uh, each of the pods belonging to that, uh, that, uh, that rollout. And if you click Show Thresholds, it will show you the, the CPU request. So this doesn't have CPU limit configured. But, so it allows you to correlate uh, what is the actual usage and what are you requesting in terms of resource for your application to run. So the idea is allowing uh, different types of correlation. So to show that the next type of correlation this extension uh, uh, shows you, uh, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna simulate a new deployment. So let's say developers worked and they fixed the 500 errors and they reduced the latency to four seconds. And the way I'm gonna simulate this, I'm just gonna change one of the annotations that we have in this rollout uh, to a different value. Um, and when I save this, it will trigger a new rollout, right? So you can see now the new replica set got uh, created, then there is a new pod being uh, initiated. So once that is done, what I'm gonna do is just uh, click promote full and go straight to the end. I don't wanna go over to each step in this particular rollout. Um, all right, so now the rollout is uh, concluded. Uh, so as I said, I'm simulating a, um, a fix by the development team, and I'm setting the latency to four seconds. And um, if I go and um, click back in the rollout resource, um, let's see what happens now. Yeah, let's click the metrics extension, and let me pause here for a second. Um, now you can, you can notice that there's a, a new icon displaying in the graph. And uh, what this, uh, yeah, before that, sorry, you can already see that the graph was, uh, it, it is displaying that the latency was, was reduced. And uh, this, new, this new icon, what it relates to, it, it will bring the, the Kubernetes event. So every Kubernetes event related to your uh, rollout will, will be displayed. So that's the next correlation that this particular plug plugin will allow uh, consumers and users to, to see. So they can correlate when specific Kubernetes event have uh, happened in their uh, application lifecycle. And that concludes the metrics extension demo. As I said, we run this uh, in production today at Intuit in more than 300 clusters. So let's see uh, 
let's do a, a deep dive, right, and um, understand what, what is happening behind the scenes here. Uh, as I said before, the, the proxy extension uh, is, is uh, actually working in conjunction with the UI extension. So the UI extension, the way it works, it will, uh, it can communicate with Argo CD API server and every single uh, uh, operation provided by Argo CD API server can be uh, leveraged to build any UI extension today. You don't need to use proxy extension. But in some cases, like in the metrics extension, uh, we need to retrieve mat uh, this uh, metric data. The data points come from Pr Prometheus, right? So we don't have uh, that available in Argo CD API. So the idea here is, here is extending the Argo CD API. So it will proxy requests from, what's going on? Oh, that's not a good idea. <laughs> no Java version, please. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. All right. <clears throat> and um, all right. So let's simulate uh, what happens uh, when a request is sent from the UI ex uh, a UI extension to the proxy extension. So when a request reaches the API server, the the first layer that it reaches in the API server in this authentic, is this authentication middleware. And uh, the authentication middleware responsibility is to authenticate that request. It does so by delegating that task to the session manager, uh, which lives in a, in a different layer inside Argo City code base. And the request is delegated to the YDC provider pre-configured in your Argo City instance. And that is, uh, if that, uh, that validates the, the token, and if everything is fine, the request is sent back to the authentication middleware, and it's handed over to the proxy handler. So the proxy handler, um, the first task it does is, is authorize that request. And it does so by uh, leveraging the Argo CD or back model. So it will uh, extract information from the user and from, from, from the incoming request. Um, and it will provide to this or back layer in Argo City, uh, which, uh, which is powered by Caspian. And once this policy is enforced, uh, then the request is, is uh, sent over to the backend. But before that, there's one additional thing that happens is the sanitization. So there are some uh, sensitive data that is removed from, from the request. And yeah, at the very end, the request is finally sent to the backend service. So let's see a very hypothetical scenario. If someone wants to build uh, um, an Argo City extension that leverages a proxy extension, and let's see how that would look like in terms of requests, right? So the UI part of the extension would have to send a request to the API server. Uh, that looks like this. So um, the API server host uh, slash extensions slash the name of the extension and then whatever that uh, endpoint will be able to handle. So in this case, I'm exemplifying this uh, using HTTP bean. And um, so if you are familiar with HTTP bean, any slash anything will just return everything that was sent uh, in, in, the, in the request. So it will return in the response everything that was sent with the headers and things. So it's, it's, it's good for testing, especially proxy uh, tools. So, um, when that request gets sent, then the proxy extension handler will identify that this request is, uh, it needs to be um, handled by the proxy uh, handler. And the name of the extension is HTTP bean. Um, and it has an internal configuration that HTTP bean extension needs to be forwarded to this uh, particular URL here, uh, which, is, which lives outside of the cluster httpbean.org. So it appends that anything and all the, the headers that are sent, if it's a post request, it, it also sends the, 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 the request body. And uh, it really works as, as a reverse proxy. Um, okay, so let's see what it takes to uh, configure this, uh, this HTTP bean hypothetical extension in Argo CD. So the first thing uh, that needs to be done is enabling the feature. So this is still in alpha. Um, so the feature was implemented in, two, in uh, Argo CD 2.7. So if you have Argo CD 2.7 and uh, later 
you're already uh, able to use uh, and leverage this feature, but you have to enable first. And you do so by editing or patching this uh, config, config map, Argo CD CMD param CM, and enabling this feature flag, okay? So the next step is, um, as I said, uh, the, all the requests to the, to, the, to the backend service needs to be authorized first, and it does so by, as I said, uh, leveraging our, our back model, and uh, it will look like this. So the, uh, the, the configuration to enable this uh, HTTP bean um, extension to be, to, be, uh, to be authorized, need, need, we need to have a, proxy, a policy that looks like this. So uh, here, what I'm doing, I'm just uh, configuring the read-only role uh, to invoke uh, the extension HTTP with name HTTP bean and the policy is allowed. Uh, okay, once this is uh, ready and applied, the last piece of configuration is adding a new entry in the Argo CD uh, CM config map. Uh, that looks like this. Uh, the, uh, there's a new attribute that was introduced called extension.config, which accepts a YAML object in it and basically what we do you can configure a list of extensions in it. And what we have here is the uh, HTTP bean um, extension configured, targeting uh, backend service, uh, pointing to this uh, specific URL. Let's say the backend requires authentication. So we also uh, allow uh, a configuration to define uh, headers. So in this case, and this is uh, something similar that, that we use at Intuit as well, so we are uh, able to define uh, uh, arbitrary headers here. So you can, if you, if you, if you need to, de to define additional headers, you can. Um, and you can also uh, reference uh, Argo City Secrets. So if you're familiar with all, how Argo City Secrets work, if you use this uh, syntax here, it, it allows uh, to, uh, Argo City will inject that secret from the Argo City Secrets, so you don't have to add this uh, secret right in the config map because it's a, uh, terrible thing to do. All right, let's move on. So this was a, a, a very, very simplistic uh, use case. Let me go uh, into uh, something a little bit more complex, which is exactly what we have uh, at Intuit. And uh, yeah, let me explain how the, the metrics extension actually works in our company. So um, we have uh, the deployment model in Argo CD where we have uh, Argo CD instances syncing clusters uh, remotely, right? So we have uh, more than 300 clusters uh, uh, in the company and 40 Argo CD instances syncing uh, uh, on the, and sharing the load over those uh, 300 clusters. Um, so in this case, we'll have uh, Argo CD applications configured with a destination uh, with different destinations. So the same Argo CD instance will have a collection of applications and each one of them uh, can be deployed in a different cluster, right? So, um, uh, so the, the, the way the, 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 the metrics extension work, um, it, it, needs, it needs some additional, uh, in a slightly more uh, complex configuration because in order to retrieve the metric from that particular application, the Prometheus metric actually leaves in the same cluster where the application is deployed. So I cannot deploy the backend part of the metrics extension in the same server Argo CD runs because the metrics won't be available there. So we need to deploy the, the metrics server in every single cluster uh, that uh, we sync uh, with Argo CD. So uh, in the way this works is that every request that is sent to the, to the, to the extension handler it will uh, be required to, it will always be made on the context of a, an application slash namespace slash project. Um, so with that in mind, so then the proxy extension can then inspect to which uh, application that uh, particular request is uh, related to and retrieve the application resource, see the destination cluster where that cluster is, uh, uh, is targeting to and then uh, proc use, a, use the dedicated proxy that will forward the request to that particular cluster. So let's see how this configuration looks like in real life. Um, so I don't know if you noticed, uh, the service part of the extension accepts an array. 
Um, so here I'm defining a, a matrix extension as the name of the extension, and it has multiple service, multiple backend services. And in the in the service uh, object, you can define a new, uh, this additional attribute called cluster, and you can provide the cluster name and the cluster uh, the server URL for that the, for that cluster. And the way it works, so the, every time this uh, config map is saved, uh, if you're using Argo CD 2.9 uh, that was released a few days ago, this uh, will be automatically uh, build, building a, uh, um, a proxy registry, so you don't have to restart the, the API server uh, anymore. And uh, the way it works, uh, Argo CD uh, API server will keep this uh, proxy registry in memory with a list of all proxies for each cluster that it syncs with. So that's how it works to uh, retrieve the, the, the metrics from specific cluster, okay? So that wraps up my part of the proxy extensions. I'll hand back to Remington to conclude the talk. Thanks, Leo. All right. Great. Well, if what we said today resonated with any of you, um, we would love it if you created your own extension. Uh, the best way to get started with that is to look at the documentation. All of the links that we mentioned today are available uh, via the QR code here. Um, but if you're not willing to create your own extension, but you have some ideas for some, uh, we would love to hear from you. So reach out to us on the Argo CD Slack channel um, or on the Argo CD GitHub, open an issue or create a discussion and uh, give us your thoughts. Uh, so I think we have a few minutes for some questions. Uh, I think there's some microphones in the center. Um, just real quick. Um, so why would you use the metrics um, extension instead of a Grafana dashboard? Leo. Yeah, yeah. The idea is not to compete with Grafana. Uh, we also have that internally. So our intention was to make that uh, um, because, as I said, we use the golden signals, right? And uh, our intention was to show that dashboard close to the developers. So developers are already there using Argo CD to debug issues, and we wanted to provide an easy way to correlate uh, Kubernetes events and also requests and resource consumption uh, for, for a specific uh, application. So that's what, that was our intention. The intention was never compete with Grafana. This is a much more mature project. Sure, sure. And then real quick, it sounds like there's very few extensions right now. Like an ecosystem? You said there's only two extensions right now? No, there's very few, is that? Very few, yes, correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, the only that we have developed are the rollouts extension and, and the timeline extension. Uh, I guess the metrics extension as well. Uh, so yes, very few, um, but yeah, if you have ideas, we're, cool. we're open. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Uh, first, kudos on live demo, that's awesome, it worked. Um, hey. Question on the, the metrics, for example, uh, obviously that would, I'm super excited to try it. I haven't tried it yet, but uh, I was wondering, it looks like it's a fixed window, right? Maybe it's 15 minutes or one hour or whatever it is. I was wondering if the extensions allow for controls where you can pass in parameters saying, hey, I, instead of whatever that time window is, I want to extend it. Yeah, today the, the, the metrics extension allows you to define, uh, uh, to look back uh, in one hour, two hours, and six hours. That's the configuration we have. This is totally configurable. Uh, because we have internal uh, constraints in the company, we just allow users to look back uh, for these time ranges. But this is also configurable. So I didn't show the metrics extension configuration, all the possibilities there, but there, there's a, quite a few. And uh, to be very honest with you, we need help documenting it. So if you're uh, willing to, to, to try it out, please reach out. We can, we can help you out. Um, thank you. Thank you. Uh, for the proxy extensions, um, if I don't need like a unique endpoint per cluster that my Argo CD manages, do I have to like paste the same one for each cluster I have, or is there like a default? If if you sync Argo CD with different clusters, you would have to add that that in the extension configuration. That's the only way that we can uh, uh, correlate that particular Argo CD application to which cluster it needs to be. Uh, sync and, and, and to where we to retrieve the, the, the metrics extension. So I'm not sure if I understood the, your question yeah. 100%. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the other one was, um, what, how much information about like, 
who invoked the extension comes through to the proxy extension. I know you get past certain headers about like the application, but uh, uh, but I was curious to see like if I wanted to look back and say like if this who like invoked this extension. Yeah, that's totally doable because when uh, the request reaches the proxy handler, uh, uh, at that point, uh, the proxy handler knows uh, it has a, the, the cookie session, so this is sent to the UI. So the, however, if you want to know that specific information in the extension itself, that is today not uh, part of the request. So what all all we provide to the backend uh, to the backend service is uh, the, the, the application that uh, extension is related to, the project and the namespace. So the actual user is not sent over to the, to the, to the prox, to the, to the backend service, sorry. Is that logged in an event somewhere? If, if, it, if that is logged? Logged, in like, or like sent out as a Kubernetes event? No, I don't think it is, no, not today. All right, uh, I think that is time. So thank you everyone for attending. Thank you.